Rebuilding Brand America, five suggestions uh, for the future president. My name is Moises Naim. I'm the editor-in-chief of Foreign Policy Magazine. And I have the honor of uh, conducting this wonderful panel. Um, we have uh, with us, from my left, your right, uh, His Highness Sheikh Hassalman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Chairman of the Economic Development Board of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Welcome, Your Highness. Martin Sorel, well known to everybody here and in the world, is the chief, group chief executive of WPP, one of the world's largest media companies. It's a, a company buys $55 billion a year worth of uh, media purchases, uh, has more than 100,000 employees in 105 countries. And, uh, but Martin is here all, not just for that, but because he has been a keen observer uh, of the intersection of, of politics, uh, uh, media, and, uh, and, and, and branding. Uh, welcome, Martin. Nice to have you here. And uh, Rupert Murdoch, uh, the proud owner of the Wall Street Journal, among um, <laughs> other assets uh, that um, we all know about News Corporation and the fact that its uh, profits grow 20% per year and that uh, his market cap now is something like uh, 20 times more than it was just uh, a decade or so ago. Welcome, Rupert. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, Maurice Levy, the Chairman, Chief Executive Officer of Publicis Group of France. He's also a member of the Foundation Board of the World Economic Forum. Uh, again, uh, Publicis is one of, of uh, the largest uh, uh, media advertising uh, uh, groups in the world, 50 billion or more uh, in, in revenues, uh, operations uh, around the world, 45% uh, of its business in the United States. Uh, and recently, just uh, last week or so, they announced a very innovative, even some would call transformational deal with Google, where Publicis and Google are going to develop uh, together. Uh, new initiatives in this front. So let's start uh, the conversation and then hopefully include you. Uh, Rupert, the president of the next president of the United States calls you after the day after the election and says, listen, people tell me this country has an image problem. Uh, people tell me that we, the United States, uh, is, uh, needs a rebranding and uh, needs to relaunch its uh, name and its brand around the world. What should I do? Is there a problem? And if so, what should I do? No, I don't think so. I just advise him to stop reading the New York Times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I think that the very title of this session uh, is based on a sort of a false presumption. Um, America has, has got a, it's a great brand. Uh, it, it's appreciated around the world. Um, look how things have changed in Europe since uh, the demagogic Chirac has disappeared. Uh, Western Europe is now openly uh, wanting to be more Atlanticist, uh, just as Eastern Europe has since it was saved from communism. Indeed, if you look at what America has done in the last century, it has saved Europe and the rest of the world three times at enormous cost and never asked anything for it. Um, fought ghastly wars uh, at great cost to, to three generations of Americans um, and won them and never asked anything in return. In fact, added to it by then helping rebuild uh, Europe as it did last time. Uh, I think America, if anything, if there's any advice to a president, um, don't be so shy about it. Uh, look where we have today uh, what President Bush has done. He'd love, if you, the liberal media like to make a hate figure of him, but what has he done? He's tr he first tripled all aid to Africa, medical, health, uh, and economic, and then he doubled that. And then on top of that, look what American philanthropists are doing. The, the, the tradition of philanthropy in America uh, as a key part of that country um, is not matched by any other country you can say in the world, whether it be uh, Britain or France or whatever. Look what Bill Gates is doing. Look what Warren Buffett is doing. And then look what every little church is doing uh, in America. 
uh, the generosity of America is absolutely amazing. Um, uh, and I think most people uh, know this. You know, and they certainly knew it very clearly when we had two superpowers in the world, uh, Russia and, uh, and the United States, and the great majority were, of course, praying and hoping uh, for America. Uh, when America rem then is left as the sole superpower, it's natural that individual countries then break away a little bit and try and say how different they are. But if you look at the enormous diversity in the United States, uh, there's a little bit of the, the whole world is there. Um, and uh, it's enormously tolerant. Um, who knows, you know, maybe going to elect a woman or Barack Obama. Um, there's a lot of great things happening in America. I'm not telling you that everything is great. If you look actually at the, all the presidential candidates and see them all bar one, perhaps pandering to some pretty bad nativist and nationalistic uh, uh, attitudes, but I guess that goes with elections in, in every country. But no, I would say if there was any advice to an American president, just be a little less shy about what a great country you are. Do you agree, Maurice? Uh, I will not uh, dare to disagree with a client. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I may maybe have a slightly different opinion on some aspect. I, I consider that uh, uh, America is a great country, and I'm speaking not only as somebody who is operating in America, but somebody who has supported America since many years because I'm the co-chair of the French American Business Council. And as such, I'm very supportive of, uh, uh, of America. America has a lot uh, of great things and a few things which have been uh, damaging the image of America. And I think it's important, uh, even when you are a very good friend of America, to see what's not working and to help uh, solving some of the issues. And part of the issues with America is the fact that they have lost something which was very, very important. This country was seen as uh, the country of freedom, the f country of generosity, and I fully agree with Rupert. What uh, America has done for Europe is second to none, and they have not asked for a penny uh, for what they have done, and they have saved our countries, and they have saved uh, our country from uh, Nazism, etc. So it's, it, we owe them a, a, a lot. And because we owe them a lot, we want them to continue to be a great country. So first, I don't believe that uh, a, any president of the U.S. will ask me to join in uh, his cabinet. If, by accident, <laughs> they're asking, because they have not looked at my passport, uh, uh, I, I would give a few advices. Uh, very timidly, because I, I, I would uh, be very cautious. Uh, the first one is um, to reframe uh, America as a citizen of the world. A, a citizen of the world with all the great values that have been during uh, more than a century the values of America. About fairness, about justice, about freedom, about democracy, about the fact that they are very inclusive, the fact that they have created the real melting pot of the world. So they have a past which is glorious, which has been a little bit colored by a few decisions in the last few years. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that in a world which is facing so many difficult issues, I would say, you can't stay away from the issues of global warming, the issue of environment. You have to uh, agree on the uh, Kyoto uh, Protocol, and you have to address some of this issue because you have to give the example to the world. The th third thing I would give as an advice is um, maybe in this new world, you should be 
a little bit less lonely when you are making some decision and accept some, uh, a, a world which is multipolar, where there are a few countries, maybe ask for advice, maybe embark more countries when you are doing a few things which are important for saving the world, and they are doing a lot, and we should be uh, not only cognizant of that, but also uh, grateful for what America is doing. So they have uh, a, a way of doing things sometimes which is uh, a little bit on their own, and if they were more inclusive, if they were more sharing, if they were more toward their true value, I think they should be a much better job. So you see, uh, Moises, um, less harsh than you have been in your article. Thank you. So Rupert, if you were the President of the United States, would you, would you take that advice? No, I think that America today does behave as a citizen of the world. I don't know what you mean. You want him in it's going to sit and listen to the United Nations uh, and, 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 and uh, in, in there when, uh, you know, everyone knows it's a corrupt, ridiculous, dysfunctional place. Uh, and, and which the and which United States, incidentally, pays much the biggest amount of money to, more than any one other, co other country. The it's General okay. de Gaulle called the United Nations le machin, uh, which is the, the thing, because uh, he was not very much in favor of the way it was run. So uh, you, you will find a lot of things on which you would agree with some French people uh, just uh, uh, a, a, a day in a year, so not very long. <laughs> yes, that was well, what I said. When I th and I think they yes. very often agree with things there. So, uh, I think, they're too, I think they're too tolerant there, probably. Uh, but, um, you know, it's one of those things that is somewhat hypocritical. Everyone goes to it. But you mentioned global warming. Now, you know, it was very simple. We know that the Kyoto Treaty doesn't work uh, and is impractical. And you say America should set an example, sign it, and obey it. Now, what do you want to do? Put everybody out of work in America? Well, China and, 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 and Russia and India don't sign it and, uh, and compete with you with their goods. Um, it's not realistic. It's just not real. So Bush has made it perfectly clear he'd sign it in five minutes if the rest of the world would. So we're moving from the realm of image to the realm of the actual product. We're discussing not about the image of the product, but the content of the product and how it is actually uh, bought or not from the rest of the world. Uh, Your Highness, the Middle East, uh, perceptions about the United States, if the President of the United States tells you, they tell me in the Arab world we have a problem, what would you say? Well, I would respond by saying that uh, probably as a product of American presence in the region, guaranteeing its security for well over 50, 50 years, uh, I would have to measure my comments uh, based on the, in the historical perspective, as Rupert said. There is no doubt that the United States of America has protected uh, global security for uh, decades and most uh, of the last century. What I think we are talking about today is not what has come before, but what lies ahead. And what attracted me as a young man uh, to go and study in the States was certainly the value system embodied by a free nation as opposed to that of a communist one. And I remember debates uh, many a time uh, before the wall fell, and the wall fell as a, a, in 1989, as we all know, about uh, the nature and the role of that kind of a system. What we are seeing today, and there is no doubt as an Arab and as a, um, as a Muslim, uh, as a proud Arab and Muslim, um, I can see that uh, the United States' involvement in my part of the world has probably led to some negative perceptions in the minds of some. What we must remember is that even though mistakes are made, and there have been plenty, all that we seek as, uh, as Arabs and Muslims uh, of the United States is that we can apply those values and ideas universally, 
So in addition to everything that's, uh, that has been said, I think I would add that uh, to the mix. And lastly, uh, I know we've talked about multilateralism as opposed to unilateralism. Um, the UN is certainly a ridiculous organization in some aspects. It has very good programs in some of its departments, but as a whole, I, I, I would take issue with it as well. But there are things that we need to be aware of. The enemies of the United States today have been far better at coalition building between sovereign nation states than the United States has. And this is something that I think the United States needs to be made aware of, and they are aware of. In order to succeed in the great endeavor that they have undertaken, they will need regional players to stand alongside them. I don't care whether that's through an international organization or through bilateral negotiations. But certainly, the United States alone is far weaker than with friends. And this is why we have endeavored to assist in, in, in this uh, uh, great um, undertaking. And finally, if I may, everybody likes a winner. So as a last point, I would humbly suggest that the United States should return to a much more conservative fiscal policy. The United States economy, uh, in addition to being, or well, the United States, in addition to being the land of freedom, was also the land of opportunity. And uh, current economic, uh, the current economic situation globally has, well, probably been a cause of concern for to many of you in this room, certainly to us. And a prudent fiscal and economic stimulus package or uh, revision of past policies, I think, is in order to regain uh, the United States' position in that regard, because only a strong America is going to be a respected America. Why is it a fiscal, a stronger fiscal position uh, more important to regain standing in the Middle East than a good outcome in Iraq? How can you discuss the United States in the Middle East without mentioning Iraq? Well, I discussed uh, Israel-Palestine by saying a, an equal application of yes. uh, values. Uh, so I think Iraq is going to be solved, uh, and I discussed Iraq by talking about multilateral partners. Iraq will not be solved by U.S. forces attempting to impose a security situation on the population of Iraq. The Iraqis themselves first must be those who uh, uh, do the job. And secondly, the region must play a, an ever-increasing role. And Iraqis themselves will tell you that they are seeking a far greater involvement from their Arab neighbors. And as a small nation, Bahrain has been calling for that. So I... Uh, I don't think you can delink uh, tactical regional issues from the much broader strategic ones. Equal application of values, freedom and democracy counts for Palestinians just as much as it does for Iraqis. Uh, Iraq cannot be supported or cannot be considered a success unless all Iraqis live in a free and prosperous country. And the United States can no longer sustain its global presence if it is not strong economically. So, that's the rationale and the logic that I'm using. Think interesting. Thank you, Your Highness. Martin, it's very interesting how in the conversation we have talked a very little about uh, actual communications campaigns and branding. And uh, so if the president would call you and say, I want WPP to do an audit of uh, my brand in the world, what would that audit look like? I'm like Maurice, I'm on dangerous territory. Rupert's also a client, but I have one advantage. <laughs> I have one advantage, and that is that we buy an awful lot of media from News Corporation uh, and from Wall Street Journal, too. So I feel, I feel a little bit... I feel, uh, it's, ne it's, ne it's never enough. We've got a long way to go, Rupert. Um, what, what I do, like all, uh, I guess, good agencies... Uh, and this re recalls the, the skills of David Ogilvy many years ago, is I, I, I would say, uh, uh, Mr. President, you, you need a little bit of research. Uh, and I would uh, engage our internet panel, which uh, the beauties of market research today is that you can get instant responses almost within 24 hours. And we actually did a little bit of research on, uh, on uh, the, the US brand, and we divided it into two things i just like to take you through. This is research from the period 1999 to 2000, we track these brands, these country brands, uh, to 2006. Uh, and we split in two things, a brand USA, which is the political brand, and then the American brands, the corporate brands, and we distinguish between the two. Uh, and the report to uh, brand manager Bush, as, if I can put it like this, 
uh, is, uh, is as follows. And I, I think the summary is that, in all honesty, despite what uh, Rupert says, and I agree 150% with the historical context of his remarks, uh, that the report card would say could do better. Uh, the U.S. brand, this is brand USA, still has significant leadership, uh, but there has been a significant decline in the perception of the brand, brand USA, over the past few years. And, uh, somewhat concerningly, it has happened in all countries. Uh, it's, there has been a loss of equity in brand USA, in the Western Hemisphere in particular, uh, and in that much forgotten area, I think particularly in uh, the context here of the World Economic Forum, Latin America. The US brand is well differentiated, but it is not well liked. And I'll come back to that in a second. But although it's not well liked as a uh, brand USA, a corporate brand, if you like, in the national sense, there's clear evidence that in each country, uh, the US corporate brands actually are improving. Uh, and it's not associated one, with one country or another. A company's brands like, uh, corporate brands like Coca-Cola and McDonald are actually doing very well in recognition and awareness and loyalty. And just give you some examples. In China, for example, 50% of the top 10 brands are US brands. In Italy, it's 40%. In Germany, it's 50 And in France, it's 50 Now, one of the things we do is we associate words, we ask the sample to associate words with the image of the country and come back to brand USA. Sadly, brand USA is seen as being, and let me soften it a bit, a bit arrogant. It is seen as being a bit unapproachable. It is seen as being rugged. It is seen as being independent. Interestingly, it's also seen, despite that, as also being kind. And most interestingly, where has Brand USA moved away from in the last six, to year, six or seven years? What words has it moved away? It's moved away from being charming. It's moved away from being stylish, from being glamorous, from friendliness, from being caring. So I think that the five, we were asked for five recommendations, and, and I've tried to keep to the brief, and I'll just, I won't go into any detail, but just name five areas in addition to surrounding himself with very strong people. Uh, I think the quality of the administration and the quality of the team is critically important. But just putting that to one side and things like personality and travel and getting out there. Uh, five things. Engagement. It's touch, touched on, Maurice touched on engagement. The simple fact is that the current administration is not engaged in various areas of the world. HIV AIDS, there has been a major initiative, as Rupert mentioned, I think of $30 billion. In Africa, it needs to be supplemented. Poverty, HIV AIDS work has been concentrated in Africa. We know that the Chinese, for example, are investing a lot of energy and time and effort, not only in Africa, but in Latin America too, and I think that has to be directed to Latin America. Sustainability, again, that's been mentioned beyond Kyoto. There are some initiatives that the US government can take in the context of becoming a green government that are critically important. And we, by the way, we do know uh, from a consumer point of view and a commercial point of view that environmental and social issues are good for business. This is not altruism or charity. We know that young people in particular buy brands and are attracted to brands, corporate or corporate, uh, country or corporate, if they commit themselves to corporate responsibility and sustainability issues. And the last is finance, Initi initiatives in the developing world that go beyond the sort of things that we've seen in the Balkans, particularly Kosovo. An obvious candidate for that would be Afghanistan. So those five areas would be the areas that I would recommend. Uh, Thank you very out. much, Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting numbers. Uh, your questions, comments, suggestions? Yes, and tell us who you are, please. Do do we have a microphone? Try, try without the microphone, see if it works. And I may. Hi, sorry, I'm from Taiping, China. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Mozart, uh, what do you think about the Okay. Um, 
um, uh, Ms. Modok, uh, ju you just bought a very important newspaper uh, for people to understand the financial aspect of America. So I would like to know your vision for Wall Street Journal, and I'm especially interested in, uh, is it possible, uh, Wall Street Journal, both the uh, paper and website, and I'm in especially uh, interested in, is it possible for people to read the website of Wall Street Journal for free, like NewYorkTime.com? If it is, when? Thank you. Let's, <laughs> let's take a few other questions and then, uh, any other questions and then we'll give panelists a chance to respond. Yes, please. Uh, Carol Bartz, Autodesk. If I look at the five things Mr. Sorrell said, it, should, it really boils down to America, be more charming and give us more money. I mean, I really do get sick of bashing Americans and then putting your hand out and saying, but you should pay more for poverty, you should pay more for disease, you should pay more for saving us, you give us more money, but let us criticize you while you give us money. That is just disgusting to me. I will give you a chance to... Another remark, comment? Yes, Trudy Rubin. Uh, Trudy Rubin from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Yesterday when Secretary Rice spoke, uh, even though uh, she was talking in the language of the Bush administration that many have been uh, down on in this session and have felt was somewhat cynical, uh, and even though many people have um, uh, talked about democracy as a value being abused by U.S. policy, her words were very warmly applauded in the session, very warmly. And I'm wondering if some on the panel, uh, perhaps uh, the Prince and, and Monsieur Levy, could talk about whether you think the reception she got reflected an eagerness on the part of many people here uh, for America to be back in the game and be associated with the old values, or what it is about that speech that seemed to evoke a warm response. Thank you. Another question? Yes, the, the gentleman in the back, please. Just a very quick question. Um, the, the attributes of the U.S. that you uh, just cited, Mr. Sorrell, Sir, Sor uh, Sir, Mar uh, Sir Martin, we're from uh, about 2000 roughly to now. I'm wondering how much of the perception in the world right now that is so sort of uh, bad is directed almost specifically at President Bush and his sort of, sort of, <laughs> well, arrogance and his unwillingness to listen to anyone else. And I personally think that possibly once he's out of office, hopefully very soon, uh, things will change. Do you, do you think that might be part of the perception problem? Thank you. One more. In the back there. Thank you. Now, I come from the advertising industry also, and my impression is that when a client comes to you and says, look, my brand is suffering, you shouldn't talk to him about changing the product, but changing perhaps the communications, the way he communicates what he does without changing what he does. Uh, shouldn't we be talking more about how America communicates what it does and explains to the rest of the world what they're doing, rather than what they're doing. Thank you. Is there anyone here willing to ask uh, something to defend the UN? <laughs> How hmm? I have a question there. I just wanted to rise to the challenge. <laughs> uh, yes, I was. I'm Shashi Tharura. I used to be at the UN until nine months ago. So I no longer am <laughs> paid to defend it. but. Um, I was a bit taken aback by some of the references to the UN, uh, largely because uh, many of the individual countries in the organization have a great deal of regard for the US, of course, and the US has its way more often than not in the UN. And the fact is that you know, a lot of the demonstrators uh, against the US in many parts of the world are probably really saying, Yankee, go home, but take me with you. So the admiration is... is <laughs> The admiration is real, but at the same time, what's, what on earth is the alternative for the 
for the US, uh, this is the one organization that brings every country together. And many countries, especially smaller ones, send their best and most skilled diplomats to New York. It's a place where the US can engage with the rest of the world, where the US can advance its goals in partnership with others rather than on its own. I mean, what's not to like about an institution that helps the US to share the burden? Sure, it's got its limitations, but you know, Dag Hammarskjöld said 50 years ago that the UN wasn't created to take mankind to paradise, but rather to save humanity from hell. And sometimes the best, that's the best the UN can do. It can prevent things from getting a whole lot worse, and it seems to me the US has a great deal of interest in working with the rest of the world in the UN. I thought I'd toss that in. Thank you. Thank you. Here, the gentleman that first. Yes, hello. I'm uh, Florian Henke from Donnersmark. I'm German and now uh, living in the United States. And um, I, uh, you know, my grandfather, who spoke about this a lot, was, in Amer was an American prisoner of war. And my father grew up under the, German under, under the um, occupation of the Americans of Germany. And um, I can tell you that both these men always spoke with incredible love and admiration of, of the United States. Even my grandfather was a prisoner for, for, for quite some time. I wonder if the Iraqi prisoners presently would talk with that same spirit um, of Americans now. Um, I, I, I do get the impression that, I, just from my experience, I think that um, those things that you were saying, that America was no longer as caring, um, I, I, I do get the impression that that is something that I, I experience in everyday life. There's no longer that gallant politeness. You can see that in the security checks at every American airport. I mean, is, is that kind of a body language that, uh, you know, uh, or uh, that, that communicates that you really like your visitors? Is there, I don't know, I, I, I do sense a completely different atmosphere. I think it's more an atmospheric thing than something actual in substance because, of course, George Bush was going in there and probably rightfully getting rid of a dictator. I mean, it's, it, in, in substance, it's the same thing, but I, I, I don't experience the same, the same human qualities. So, so I do think it's an image thing, and I think that, that is something that, um, that has to be approached. Thank you. So we have uh, a wide range of issues, but let's start with the most critical, urgent one. Are you going to open the Wall Street Journal online? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to uh, greatly uh, expand and improve the free part of the Wall Street Journal online, but there will still be uh, a better and stronger uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, which you cannot get anywhere else and which will be... Uh, 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 now that we uh, have by sub on subscription, so we're sort of dividing it up. Uh, those things that you can get more or less as a commodity on different sites about finance, that will certainly be free on the Wall Street Journal, and I hope better than elsewhere. But the really specialised things that give you the greatest insights, that will still be a subscription service, uh, and we have, sorry to tell you, probably more expensive. Uh, so now that we have gotten rid of that anxiety, we can move on to the image of the United States in the world. <laughs> react the, react to, to, to that and to the United Nations and to several other things that were directed, and then I will give you... Want to start? Uh, I was just going to say, when, it's very easy to, today in 2008 to overlook the fact that for America, um, the world changed on 9-11. And uh, a lot, everything has followed from that. That was a tremendous shock to America uh, and really to the whole world. But the world not being there can, has the luxury of forgetting it. Um, I don't want to add uh, to that um, very strong remark by the lady about uh, Martin Sorrell on the $30 billion, but I, I just have to support it. Uh, there is a lot more than $30 billion. There's, there's more than another 30 billion given voluntarily by Americans. How much has been given by people in Britain? How much has been p given by people in Europe uh, to Africa, if we really think pouring money into the country will save it? Um, it it's, uh, I think it's, you know, no, the lack of recognition of what has been done in the last five to seven years uh, in aid to Africa both, both officially and philanthropically, uh, is, is scandalous. Now, America's made many mistakes. I'm the first to, to, to admit that. And I'm the first to admit and, and criticize President Bush as, and let's say, an inadequate communicator. His father was just the same. Um, 
the greatest communicator after Reagan, of course, um, was uh, Clinton. But what the hell did he achieve? You know? um, he, didn't get his, he didn't get his peace in the Middle East. Um, he had a more, dancing the Prince's point, a more fiscally conservative policy and balanced budgets, but they were imposed, so happened, by the Republican majority in the Congress, um, who killed Mrs. Clinton's health plan. Um, the, I, I agree we should be a lot more fiscally conservative. It's part of the system, and I think this president has been perhaps a little weak uh, in not stopping the politicians of both parties spending wildly. And, and that's a great shame, but it's part of you know, the democratic system as worked under the Constitution there, um, which um, all Americans love. And it, it, on balance, is a wonderful document, but it does lead to these sort of uh, malfunctions. Um, and this, I think that's a real, real problem. Um, since I was so rude about the United Nations, uh, I just said, of course, there's no alternative. This, it, it's very good to have a talk shop where everyone can meet. Um, but if, and maybe reach agreement about things. Uh, but when it comes to doing things, you know, they've said we must we put a peacekeeping force in here. They've had them in the Middle East, they've had them in parts of Africa, they've had them in parts of Europe. And, you know, nearly every occasion, uh, the, 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 the UN has ordered the peacekeepers out of the area the moment the first shots were fired. Um, let's be realistic about it. Um, it is not something that can impose itself, uh, even with total agreement there, uh, it cannot impose itself militarily. Uh, it doesn't work. And uh, so um, it's useful. You know, they want to spend $4 billion now to rebuild the whole place. And of course, the mayor of New York says, let's keep it there because we'll have more of these damn diplomats spending their money here and make Manhattan more prosperous. But who's going to pay the $4 billion? Uh, the majority of our guarantee will come from the poor old U.S. taxpayers, but that's all right. Um, maybe it's worth it. But uh, my only really serious point was you must remember that the world changed on 9-11. Thank you. Thank you. So, Martin, this notion that uh, people criticize the United States and uh, ask for more money, more aid, and, and yet bash it. Okay. Well, uh just say that these, uh, these perceptions um, and these differences are sometimes unpleasant to accept, particularly when you've had events, as Rupert has pointed out, of 9-11. But the fact is that they do exist. Now, the U.S. is a 12, I think last time I looked, a $12 trillion economy. I also said that it had it, and is a leadership brand. When you are the brand leader in any industry, you have certain responsibilities as well as rights. Uh, and the simple fact is I think that the relationships in the US to the other parts of the world, as I think the research indicates, have de deteriorated. Whether this is a question of leadership or not, I think is a, an interesting question. But if we look at corporations, we know that the, the corporations, the reputation of corporations and their image are determined by the leaders of those corporations. Uh, and the leader, the CEO, chairman of a company uh, I I indicates uh, the values of the companies and their, and their approaches. So I think leadership is an important issue. There are lots of examples of the sort of things that the gentleman in the front row mentioned in terms of the, the tone. I mean, one of the things <clears throat> that stri stri struck me as somebody who studied in America and had the privilege of studying in America uh, at a fairly young age and two years away in a, in a, in a good American university, I think, was a tremendous experience for me. That is something that is being precluded at the moment. The United States, in terms of immigration, uh, in terms of studying now in, in the US, is a much more difficult place to enter. That's one of the tonal uh, issues that I think a new administration uh, would add. I, I just add one point. I think these, these things, or they may be unpleasant to accept, uh, and the second question obviously found it uh, unacceptable and unpleasant, can be changed very quickly by a change in leadership. And I think what we'll see post the election, that change take place. Because I think these things are issues, not of product, but of communication. 
And the leadership skills and the communication skills, whether it's somebody like Reagan, President Reagan, or President Clinton, uh, I think will be a, a significant contribution. Thank you. Your Highness, address the comment from the gentleman uh, in the advertising world that said, if a client comes and tells me that has an image problem, I'm not trying to change the product. I try to give a, a sense. Comment on that. Well, I, I would respectfully say that uh, I cannot just say that it's a change of communication. I do think the product needs to be amended. The general direction is absolutely correct. And uh, I think we have come on, out on record publicly supporting all of the initiatives that have been undertaken by this current government. What we have uh, probably more in agreement with is the vision that was uh, articulated by Henry Kissinger yesterday, where he said there is a uh, difference between the idealism and the pragmatism and the relationship between the two in devising a strategy to achieve su success. So depending on the status quo only leads to stagnation. You do need to push forward. You need to, do need to push boundaries. The question is, is a, in a greater understanding of what is possible. And let me please refer to the young lady's uh, comment about why the response to the Secretary of State's uh, speech was so warm. It was a good speech. It was a speech that embodied values that we should all aspire to share. Some of us have histories that we are struggling to reconcile with the idealism uh, represented there, but we should all be on that road as responsible citizens of this global community. What I think everyone heard there was also a recognition that this would take time. There was no um, uh, urgency uh, or, or hyperactivity uh, linked into the speech. The, the term that was used was that um, change will take generations and each area and each nation and each people will define that change in their own terms. But this is the broad direction that it will take. And it will be uh, based on the concept of respect of human rights. It will be based on the right of individuals to choose uh, the policies that their governments follow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, as a human value, this has been present in human discourse uh, since time immemorial, uh, leading and in defense of the, UN, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. There are uh, many things that we can point to as successes uh, but I think uh, just the way that it's done and maybe the speed at which it's expected to be achieved, that's what, what some people differ on. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Maurice, uh, comment on, 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 I know you have several reactions, but th th one specific one is, um, do the United States have a Bush problem in their image or do they have a United States problem? The whole issue of uh, what happens if there's a leadership change. I'd like to, 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 to say two or three things before, if you allow me to say that. The first thing is that uh, as a, an ad man, and I have spent uh, already quite a few years in, in this industry, I hate, I hate to speak about the country with a brand and a product. I think this is irrelevant, it's wrong, it's not a brand. You have, uh, we can speak about the image of a country, a country is not a brand. And I think uh, uh, it, when you start thinking of a country as a brand, necessarily you, you have all the technique of communication and marketing, which has very little to do with the set of values that the country must have. And uh, uh, this is something which is reversing for me. Uh, I said it, but uh, I had to say it. The second thing I would like to, to second thing I would like to say that um, America is a great country, huge, enormous, in, in every aspect. And uh, Rupert said it uh, historically; uh, it's true. And uh, we owe we Europeans, but also the world, a lot to America. And uh, America is facing currently some issues which have to do first with 9-11, which has also to do with some other aspects which are tainting a little bit uh, the image of America, coloring it in a bad way. And uh, 
uh, as unfair as it can be, and it is always unfair when it comes to perception, obviously people think things and you cannot stop people thinking. And if they have a bad perception, it's very unfortunate, it is maybe unfair, but I think one thing that we all need to do is to listen to the people. Why do they think so? They had, for America, love. More than thinking it's charming or glamorous or something of this kind. It was the dream of the world. Uh, everyone wanted to immigrate to America. Everyone, okay, we, we, we know all this. And uh, we, we are, number of people who have spent a few years in America or uh, more than that. And uh, it's difficult to accept from somebody you love that this person you love is not behaving with the standard of uh, values, principles that you expect from the person you love. So obviously you are even more uh, tough on uh, uh, these people than uh, the ones who are behaving uh, normally badly. Look at what happened with... Uh, uh, other countries which came to freedom uh, after the uh, uh, wall of Berlin fall. And uh, what happened? There has been a lot of issues, a lot of problems, a lot of difficulties, and there has not been a lot of bashing. And there has not been a lot of bashing because there was no love. And that is the, the key issue. When you, you, you have a country with such principles, you are expecting that these principles are applied. So why Condoleezza Rice has been so warmly applauded yesterday? It's because her speech was based on key principles. And it was uh, the kind of speech that we were expecting from America since a long time. And um, not only she, it has been very well delivered, but the content was superb. Now, if um, I'm moving to uh, uh, so, some aspect, we, we, we cannot say, okay, what has to be changed is communication. I, I'm, I'm sorry. There are a few things which have to change. Uh, and uh, what we have seen uh, uh, recently in France is that uh, a change in government is something which can change quite dramatically if the leadership has changed. Uh, the impact uh, on the, of the, and the image of this country uh, in the world. So uh, when there will be a new election, if uh, the right person is elected with the right principle and uh, the right uh, team around, the right administration, you will have an impact. But it's not enough. It's not enough. And I don't believe that what we should be asking is more money uh, and the more thing of this kind. I think that the first thing is about values, and that America act according to its values. What has been the problem? The problem, and we should not hide ourselves uh, from the issue, the problem has been Iraq. What has been the turning point? When 9-11 happened, there has been a solidarity of the world toward, uh, toward America. Uh, everyone was uh, uh, screaming and uh, uh, having tears for what was happening, how think of this magnitude could happen to a free country who was so open. Uh, and, uh, okay, it, it was considered as unfair, as terrible. There is a lot of people who have been killed, and these people were absolutely innocent people. And this has created also a, a shock. I have been in America just a few days after 9-11, and I have spent uh, uh, 10 days in America flying from a city to another because I wanted to be with my teams all around. And I was flying commercial in empty planes, in empty airports. So it was absolutely terrible. The shock that America has faced was terrible. So when the war in Iraq happened, uh, there was a disagreement because was it linked with 9-11 uh, or not? Uh, there was a lot of question about uh, a weapon of mass destruction, etc., etc. What I can tell you is that I have had uh, personally hard time because I had uh, some serious discussion with uh, 
uh, Jacques Chirac and uh, with Dominique, Villepin, Dominique de Villepin because I was in total disagreement with the way, not with the fact, but the way they were expressing their disagreement. I think that they had not to go in all the countries and to fight against America. They had to say what they had to say and not to do a campaign and campaigning against America. And this has been a, 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 a serious issue that I have had with, with them. The final point that I would like to make is that um, the image of a person and the image of a country, a brand is slightly different because a brand uh, has uh, uh, some, some other aspect where you, you can play with because it's a product that you have to sell. You don't sell a country. And um, you, the only way to act is to be true to the values. When you are true to the values, this is fine. And you are well received and people are absolutely supporting you. So sorry for having a, a little bit long, but uh, I wanted to make the point. Well, that, you made it. And, Thank uh, you. That's I think very you good. You also made it that uh, some of those things can be said about France, and which we all love. <laughs> Let me, we are reaching our final minutes. Let, before, before we end, let me give uh, Martin Sorrell a chance to react to the notion that a country is not a brand, that is an error to think uh, of a country as a brand. And then I want to go to uh, Rupert Murdoch about uh, American double standards. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Well, I, I think, uh, I find it extraordinary that Morris would take that view since uh, his, his agencies are involved in and have historically been involved in selling countries as brands. Um, Okay, each, each, well, uh, no, that's we'll, brands. we'll go through, we'll go through the, the whenever brand, you want. A Martin. brand is only a framework, Maurice, as you well know, for expressing the attributes of a yeah, country. Or, uh, brand is different. Oh, it, 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 okay, we will not every, argue here. We will show that we are every friends. country, every country and that has, we love each other. Every country has an image, and every country has certain attributes uh, on which it. Uh, absolutely, it I developed. agree on that. And but everybody has a affections image. and emotions about a country, whether it be France mm. or the UK or, mm. or the US or wherever it happens to be. In this particular case, all we're seeking to do is to provide some sort of an analytical framework for seeing the way that the, the views of the world have changed of, of about America in relation to other countries, uh, and, the, and the balance of power in terms of perception has also shifted. Uh, and I think... You know, we all admire and respect the history of America, what America has done for all of us, particularly in Europe and Western Europe, uh, on at least two major occasions, and we all value that. And it's because we value it that we prize it, and we prize it so highly that we don't like to see it affected in this way. But all we've sought to do is identify where improvements need to be made. And I think many people in the world believe that to be the case. Thank you. Rupert, what I want to, to ask you to elaborate is on uh, critics of the United States always refer, often refer to the notion of the double standard of hypocrisy, that the United States launches this campaign for democracy, but then is closely allied uh, to countries like Pakistan and Saudi Arabia and others that are not democracies, that um, the nuclear proliferation issue uh, uh, North Korea uh, developing an agreement with India uh, and at the same time not allowing Iran uh, to develop its program. Vietnam and Cuba, embargo on Cuba and yet uh, very, very good now, better relationship with Vietnam. So wh why embargo Cuba and have a uh, you know, close relationship, uh, commercial and otherwise Vietnam? So it's the double standards, you know, the Middle East. Uh, the, the, there is a, a long history of grievances there about uh, accusations of double standards. So that apparently is an important source of uh, 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 reactions against the United States. How, how, what would you say about that? I think it's unfair to pick on the United States there. We all know the world's a very complicated place. Uh, we would love to say, well, we will only support 100% perfect democracies. We'd love to have a 100% perfect one ourselves. Uh, there is no perfection, and there is always going to be tension between pragmatism and idealism. 
Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, idealism wins out more than, 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 than pragmatism. But you mentioned Pakistan. Um, you know, it, is, it has not been a successful democratic state um, in many, many ways. Um, and this is, do they support Musharraf? Yeah, I mean, do we want the jihadists to get those atomic weapons? Uh, ask the Indians. They're praying for Musharraf. Uh, and they're, they're, they're a, you know, a great working democracy in India. Um, complicated, not perfect, but a, still a great working democracy. Um, and they have uh, Pakistan right next door. Um, and, you know, there are facts of life which just mean that the world is a complicated place and we all have to do our best. And America is imperfectly, but certainly striving very hard to do its best. I just want to add one little comment uh, from the front row here about the airports. They're not welcoming, but no one hates American airports are going through them more than Americans themselves. <laughs> um, and um, that's something we've got to sort out. Um, but it's, um, again, it's a product of 9-11 uh, and um, perhaps too much bureaucracy uh, in Washington. But uh, the, on the broader question, uh, yes, I think all of us, to some extent, um, are guilty of having had double standards. Um, and, um, but you know, we have to be realistic about it and we have to work our way through it uh, as, as well as we can, hoping that we're more often on the side of the gods than against them. Thank you. Thank you. Your Highness, would you like to comment on this double standard issue briefly? No, that, I... That's fine. That's fine. Let me take uh, some... <laughs> well... <laughs> okay, if you put it like that... <laughs> now, I think, okay, if you want a comment, I'll give you a comment. <laughs> It is an imperfect world we live in. I come from a country that is growing its democratic experiment day by day, uh, hour by hour, minute by minute. And it's not perfect. And there are setbacks. But what's, what we should certainly be seen to be doing is trying to eliminate those uh, paradoxes or, 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 or hypocrisies that we all uh, probably have in our, in our closet. So. The United States, if I could give it one piece of advice, would be to try as much as possible to apply its, its values universally. It, it will make us all play the game better. I think uh, that was a very good uh, note on, on which to end uh, what has been a wonderful session. Please uh, join me in thanking me, uh, Maurice Levy, Rupert Murdoch, Martin Sorel, and Shea. Thank you very much. Thank you.